address the issues facing Tennesseans today. From 10 News, this is Inside Tennessee. Your life. Sure. Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm your moderator, John Becker. Who's in charge in Knox County? Leaders appear to make some headway this week and answer that question. And here to talk about a pension lawsuit stirring this question are two political veterans in the county. Mike Ragsdale served as mayor of Knox County for two terms from 2002 to 2010. John Gree served close to a dozen years on county commission. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Pleasure. Pleasure. We'll get to questions momentarily. First to our panel on the end there is Dennis Francis. He is a Democrat, runs his own firm. Morning. Good morning. Susan Richardson Williams is a Republican. She runs her own PR firm. Good morning, JB. Good morning. And John North runs the digital maestro work at WBIR.com. Morning, John. Uh, let's start with what we know, and that is what commission decided on Thursday evening in a seven to one vote to say, hey, we want to settle this lawsuit. But John North, bring us up to speed because you've been integral in reporting kind of where we stand on this. For our viewers who don't know about this pension suit, some background before we hear from our guests. There's been concern brewing behind the scenes for many months about this <coughs> lawsuit. It was filed earlier this year by the law director. He says he wanted a question resolved about compensation when it came to deputies under the county pension system. Had to do with what they call cash out days. Uh, the new mayor, Glenn Jacobs, uh, asked commission, hey, let's end this. Let's stop spending all this money. Why are we suing ourselves? Which I, I think is certainly a legitimate question and one a lot of people had. Commission initially didn't want to put it on the agenda. He said, all right, I'll call a special meeting. That's what happened on Thursday. They met and by a vote of seven to one, the commission said, yes, let's end this, please, Mr. Law Director. Now, it's non-binding. It's a resolution, but the pressure is on him but it's not over yet because we've got a court hearing tomorrow morning before Chancellor Weaver. So gentlemen, what do you make of how we got here? And Mayor, we'll start with you. Uh, this appeared to pit the mayor and the law director and partly commission against each other saying, I'm in charge, no, you're in charge, no, I'm in charge. Something very similar happened when I was mayor. We had a lawsuit where the county commission and the school board were suing one another. We came into office, we met with the school board chair, the county commission chair, marched down to the law director's office and said, we've reached a settlement, now file the legal, legal papers, let's get this done. Now, John probably remembers that because you're on the group that voted to affirm what we, our negotiations and that's commission's role. But in this particular case, I think the law director has taken it on himself. Uh, Bud Armstrong's a friend of mine, I applaud his public service, but in this case, I think Mayor Jacobs is game on. As of this past Monday, $657,000 had been spent on legal fees uh, according to, uh, to the mayor's office. And that's just really unbelievable when you think about it. You're suing yourself with that kind of money. Taxpayer dollars. John Grease, what do you make of where we stand? It, it seems to me to be really stupid on the part of the law director. You've got a county executive and you've got a commission by a vast majority is in favor of getting this behind them. And instead, for some un explicable, inexplicable reason, he wants to continue this on. It makes no sense to me. I don't know who's running the ship up there, but if the county executive and the county commission say, let's settle this, that's an easy answer for the law director. Why fight that? It makes no sense. So who should be running the ship up there? And according to the charter, we have a, a, an elected law director, we have an elected mayor. So how does that work within our charter? I think it works very simplistically. And I, I think uh, you should give Mayor Jacobs a great deal of credit because he is taking charge. He hasn't been in office even two months now, and he's saying, let's put this thing to arrest, let's settle it. In Knox County, we do have an elected law director, but I view the law director as a staff attorney, not a person who sets policy, not a person who legislates like a commissioner would. So I view that as a law director's job. To get out and start doing things on your own, I do not think is his job in the least. And John, and John before you weigh in, I just want to put up for our viewers um, what, in fact, the Knox County Charter says. John North helped dig this up about the law director's authority, and it says uh, this in part about uh, his authority to execute and administer all of the legal affairs of the county, including litigation, drafting of contracts or other documents, instruments and papers, the investigation of titles, and to advise and counsel county officials and the commission on all legal matters affecting their respective offices. And then we also have what it says about the mayor's authority. And if we can look at that as well, that will help our viewers understand where the charter is on that having the sole power and authority to enter into contracts on behalf of Knox County, except as otherwise provided 
in this charter. John Grease. Let's forget all the legal terminology, all the written words. This is a common sense decision on the part of the law director. I don't get it. I mean, so, the, so it's not going to cost the county any money. It's basically already calculated into the contributions the county has to make to the pension plan over the next 20 years. The actuary said it's no problem. And the law director, I, either there's somebody that's pulling his strings or he's just way off base. And I'm sure you're a good friend of his and I don't know him. He could be my good friend too, but he, <laughs> this is just a bad mistake on his part. It's terrible public relations. But Boy. Bud was a county commissioner when, when I was mayor. I enjoyed serving mm -hmm. with him. I, I think his heart's in the right spot, but I have to agree with John on this as well. This has gone too far down a wrong path, and hopefully it will end on Monday with and Chancellor Weaver's decision. Just one more thought about that. So on Thursday, I watched a commissioner uh, from East District. Dave Wright. Dave Wright. Right. Go on and on and stretch out the fact that he eventually got around after finishing a sentence finally to saying I'm going to vote against it. Yeah. Why would he vote against it? It makes no sense. There's something the there's something vote. different. Yeah. Well, there were three that well, didn't show up. Others? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Where were the other three? Are they not the three that voted no in the previous week along with Dave Wright? They were. Mm -hmm. So they just decided not to show up. This, this the mayor might know the answer to this because my, uh, my legal clerk, John North, uh, failed <laughs> today, refused or neglected. We're having a heck of a time, Mayor, finding two, maybe three counties in the great state of Tennessee that elect a law director, Knoxville obviously being one of them. So it's not, you know, why do we have, why does the mayor, whoever the mayor might be, why does the mayor not have the authority or the power to have their lawyer work for him? And, and you're, you say, you're saying that is unusual, that in Knox County we do elect a law director. Absolutely. It's very very few places yeah. do. It's incredibly unusual, and in a perfect world it wouldn't be that way. I think that the mayor should have legal counsel that he or she picked themselves and you pick your own uh, lawyer to represent you. Several times when I was mayor there was conflicts with the uh, law director's office in which case they very readily said who do you want to hire let's get your own legal counsel. We did that numerous times. I mean, never never a conflict in doing that however. I have one more question for sure. the mayor. Uh, $650,000? 657. Mayor, could the sheriff's department, could the schools, could somebody abuse that money? Well, we all know without question they could have, and they could have put it to very good use. Uh, I think our deputies need more uh, salary increases. I think our teachers need salary increases. That's going to be a challenge uh, for this administration. It's been a challenge for every administration. And uh, Mayor Jacobs, I know, would much prefer to spend money in those type of fashions rather than uh, on outside legal counsel in a lawsuit, as John mentioned, really doesn't make much sense to the common citizen. We're going to talk a little bit more about this, but just about the shape of county government and how it's changed since these gentlemen were in office. We'll be back with that conversation right after this.